الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our Lord the gracious, the merciful, the master of the earths and the heavens, the king of the day of judgment, Azza wa Jal. And the prayers and the blessings of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and be upon all those who follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استن بسنته وسار على هديه إلى يوم الدين Indeed we bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى And that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the messenger of Allah I remind myself and remind you to be pious, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be God conscious, to heed the orders of the Almighty Azza wa Jal when he says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqullah, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatih, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqullah, wa al tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadim wa attaqullah, in Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon. O who you believe, be God conscious. And let and die in no way except in the way of Islam. O who you believe, be God conscious. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he knows best what you do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instill taqwa in our hearts. And to keep our feet steadfast. To forgive our sins, guide our steps, and enter us into paradise. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we have wanted to have certain themes for the khutbas so that we can, inshallah, magnify and enforce the message. And so this month, as we talk about the iman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we talked about Ar-Rahma, and this month we want to talk about the concept of rizq, sustenance. And there are so many places in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that talks about sustenance. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi surah al-dhariyat, wa fi anfusikum afala tubsirun, wa fi al-samai rizqukum wa ma tu'adun, فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌّ مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْطِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are signs within you for you to heed and in heavens is your rizq, your sustenance and whatever you have been promised فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌّ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى The Lord of the earths and the heavens makes a solemn swear that by him subhanahu wa ta'ala the lord of the earths and the heavens this is the truth the same way you utter the words coming from your mouth nothing is more certain in terms of what we do in behavior than the actual saying because you could hear something and you may not be sure that it was the correct thing and you can see something from afar and you're not sure that it's what you're seeing. But when you say it, you are certain of what you are saying. And in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He says in so many other places, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا كُلٌّ فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ وَكَأَيٍّ مِّن دَابَّةٍ لَا تَحْمِلُ رِزْقَهَا اللَّهُ يَرْزُقُهَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ So many places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about rizq and how it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what some people don't realize, and this is where 
the message that we need to hear. Some of us associate rizq with either working hard. Ya ayyuhal nas, kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyibah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us and required us to work hard. Yadribuna fil ardi yabtaguna min fadlillah. Working hard, trying to gain from the benefits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, there are the concepts of hard work and relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the fact of the matter is, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that rizq is in the sama, وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ He didn't say subhanahu wa ta'ala وَفِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to explain this further, says in a hadith Qudsi, يَقُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ رُوحَ الْقُدُسِ نَفَثَ فِي رَوْعِي أن نفسا لن تموت حتى تستكمل رزقها فاتقوا الله وأجملوا في الطلب ولا يحملنكم استبطاء الرزق أو الرزق أن تطلبوه بمعاصي الله سبحانه وتعالى عز وجل فإنه لا يدرك ما عنده إلا بطاعته شوف إخواني The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم tells us that Jibreel عليه السلام relate to him that there will not be a soul that will pass without its fulfilling its allotted rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that sustenance. So the first thing he asked, Fattaqullah. So the requirements needed to attain whatever has been allotted to you of rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not about hard work, is not about seeking it in ways that will violate the orders of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing, you have to play by the rules. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or the Prophet sallallahu tells us, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُدْرَكُ مَا عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِطَاعَتِهِ So you will not get that which is yours except through the ta'a of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when he said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَجْمِلُوا فِي الطَّلَبِ Then choose the methods by which you seek this rizq in this life. And do not let the delay that you may perceive as a delay for the rizq that will come your way makes you sway away from doing it in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. So do not use means of getting that which you think is rizq through ways that will violate the very rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then what do we do? If we, are, we understand that rizq requires of us to work hard, rizq requires of us to be serious, rizq requires of us to not waste our time, rizq requires of us to do so many things. That's the given, that's what we all know. Everybody on this earth, in order for them to survive, they have to do all these things. But what we have in the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that points to the real issues that will allow us to fulfill this promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ Then subhanallah, when we tie the concept of rizq in this life with, with what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Some of us don't make that association, you see. You think you're on earth, you're just about living and then doing things that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it is more important to realize that it's all tied to following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there is no separate ways in this dunya and separate ways in the hereafter. Even though sometimes we superficially tie them together. You know, you, you give yourself the, 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 the illusion that you're working hard for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So rizq will come your way, but you don't look at the specifics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in order for us to streamline this process of rizq as a way of doing things in our lives. And I'll show you how. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah Al-Dhariyat, the, the promise, the solemn swear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said, there were verses before that that led to the, pro, uh, the, the swearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about فَوَرَبِّ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِنَّهُ لَحَقٌّ مِثْلَ مَا أَنَّكُمْ تَنْطِقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the early verses says إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَعُيُونَ So those who understand this concept, 
those who know that the rizq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not amongst us. It's not the gold that you see next to you. It's not the bonds or stocks that you have. And it's not your 401k. It all starts in, in, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he starts to line up to you those who know that this is where rizq is. And so if they align their lives today with that which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will find their path to rizq. And they will have what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allotted for them. And they will do it while in the same way walking towards the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that change in concept, that change in the way we think about things is very essential, my dear brothers and sisters. We can't live these divided lives. One day we're 8 hours or 10 hours or 12 hours working just to gain the, the, the money. And then we think that that's the rizq that came our way and we, then we spend it and we can do good with it. But the fact is that life is too short. We have to make sure that we are aligning our lives constantly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَعُيُونَ Tells us about taqwa. آخِذِينَ مَا أَتَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ مُحْسِنِينَ the concept of ihsan. Subhanallah, the verses leading to it talks about Kanu Qalila min al ma yahja'oon. Talks about that special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qiyamul Layl. Wa bil ashari hum yastaghfirun. And I'll come to it, the concept of istighfar in the process of rizq. Wa fi amwalihim haqqul lil sa'ili wal mahroom. Wa fi al-ardi ayatun lil muqinin. Wa fi anfusikum afala tubusirun. Wa fi al-samai rizqukum wa ma tu'adun. Fawa rabbi al-samai wal-ardi. Innahu lahaqqum mitla ma annakum tantiqun. So the scholars, when they dig into this, they say that if you truly want to attain the rizq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made your way, then you have to pay attention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many places in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu tells us. So when it comes to taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِيش? وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْتُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Now many of us, you know, grapple with this. I mean, like, rizq that comes my way, do it. Align yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says, أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ his way is the way that we adopt in life. Nothing more, nothing less. And so your life should be a constant process of aligning your lives with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. Everything else will fall into place. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he ordered us to do, and you do that which he requires of you. That's in short what you should be doing in life. So in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also describes nations. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ We look at istighfar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tied this directly with the concept of rizq. فَقُلْتِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا سيدنا نوح عليه السلام Tying this concept of prosperity, this concept of sustenance with that which ties you directly with Allah سبحانه وتعالى سيدنا هود عليه السلام calling his people يا قوم استغفروا ربكم ثم توبوا إليه يرسل السماء عليكم مدرارا وَيَزِدْكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ وَلَا تَتَوَلَّوْ مُجْرِمِينَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, guiding his companions, he would advise them, أَكْثِرُوا مِنِ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ فَمَنْ أَكْثَرَ مِنَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ هَمٍّ فَرَجًا وَمِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجًا وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْتُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Make istighfar a habit. Because istighfar is returning to the source, subhanahu wa ta'ala, of all good in this life. Then the concept of the reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Prophet ﷺ explains to us, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلُهُ لَرَزَقَكُمْ كَمَا يَرْزُقُ الطَّيْرِ تَغْدُوا خِمَاصًا وَتَرَوْحُوا بِطَانًا 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that on this earth there is ways to gain rizq through the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huwa alladhi ja'ala lakum al-arda dhalulan famshu fi manakibiha wa kulu min rizqi. And so on and so forth. Ni'ma ajru al-amilina alladhina sabaru wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. Then we have to start looking, my dear brothers and sisters, as if we want to make sure that our rizq is coming our way and that we're cultivating it in the, west, in the best way possible. Because many have gotten what was, what was allotted to them from rizq and they have wasted it away. But those who understand that this rizq is their pathway to the hereafter understand that they must live it within the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So taqwa, istighfar, tawakkul. The fourth one is shukr. Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us مَا أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عَبْدٍ نِعْمَةً فَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا كَانَ الَّذِي أَعْطَاهُ أَفْضَلْ مِمَّا أَخَدْ Whenever you constantly remember the source of all goodness subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're thankful for his blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the more generous, will be the most generous your thanking will be rewarded in multitudes. وَسَيَجْزِي اللَّهُ الشَّاكِرِينَ رَبِّ أَوْزِعْنِي أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نِعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِ Subhanallah, the prophets, how they, they engage their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another one which we see in the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we may not pay attention to. We think rizq is all about, like I said, just hard work and spending hours and hours trying to collect money. But the Prophet ﷺ tells us, مَنْ سَرَّهُ أَنْ يُبْسَطَ لَهُ فِي رِزْقِهِ وَأَنْ يَنْسَأَ لَهُ فِي أَجَلِهِ فَلْيَصِلْ رَحْمَةِ The connecting with your families, making sure that you take care of those who are closest to you, making sure that you are always taking the higher road and mending the relationships with those who may even boycott you, who, who may even have a problem that has happened, that has allowed for a gap between you and them. Make it in your behavior, make it in your actions always to reach out to them and to make sure. For if you read the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ, there is so many avenues that lead to the increase in one's rizq and in the blessings of one's, one's rizq through that which is reaching out to your others. In أَعْجَلَ الطَّاعَةَ تَوَابًا صِلَةُ الرَّحْمِ وَمَا مِنْ بَيْتِ أَهْلٍ يَتَوَاصَلُونَ إِلَّا يَكُونُوا بِخَيْرٍ تَنْمُوا أَمْوَالَهُمْ وَيَكْتُرُ عَدَدَهُمْ إِذَا تَوَاصَلُوا Subhanallah, many many of the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ guides us to these actions of Silatul Rahim. The fifth is to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the whole understanding of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for you and recognizing that it is for you to use it as a tool to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to understand that whatever you, you give, ما نقص أو ما نقص مال من صدقة, whatever you give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it your way coming back to you. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَهُوَ يُخْلِفُهُ وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الرَّازِقِينَ Who is the best of sustainers? Who is the best of providers? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace and will give it in multitude. And if we have the imbalance of understanding where the concept of giving comes in our lives, we become beholden to the shaitan. الشيطان يعيدكم الفقر ويأمركم بالفحشاء والله يعيدكم مغفرة منه وفضلا والله واسع عليم So we need, my dear brothers and sisters, to, to realign everything that we do in our lives with what matters. So even in a matter as mundane as rizq and everyday activity that you do when you wake up and you work every day, re-examine what you do, the bulk of your day every morning. Look into these ways and figure out how can I best realign my life with that which is in heaven, not with that which is on this earth. And how do you make that a pathway, a bridge for you towards the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
Abdul Rahman, uh, and, and I'll relate the story. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf was one of the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was known, he's known to be the man who when he came to Medina and, and there was the ties of brotherhood with the people in Medina, he went and he didn't want just the gifts from his brother who took him in and he told him, just show me where the market is, show me how I can gain my sustenance. And he became one of the wealthiest of the believers. He used to say, عَوَّدَنِ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَادَةً وَعَوَّدْتَهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ عَادَةً فَلَا أَقْطَعُوا عَادَتِي مَعَ اللَّهِ فَيَقْطَعُوا عَادَتَهُ مَعِي Subhanallah. He had a special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he would say that I have made it incumbent upon me to make sure that I do certain things to my Lord. Where he would give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with nobody else knowing. Maybe he was taking care of orphans that nobody knows where the, their sources of income or their sources of sustenance is coming. Maybe he has made it upon himself to have what's called a khabi'a between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An elderly lady that you're assisting or a brother who's having a hardship that you're making it easy for him or so on and so forth. But every time you think that you have done enough, or every time you think you have given enough over the years or enough for one person or one family, don't break it. Be like Abdul Rahman, who knows that when he takes that time to give that sustenance to that poor person or to that orphaned child or that widowed lady, he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will return it to him in multitudes. And so he would say that I have made a habit that my Lord has blessed so that if I break my habit, I'm worried that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will break his habit with me. This is the kind of faith that is rooted within our understanding of what sustenance is. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna sakhi qareebun min Allah, qareebun min al-nas, qareebun min al-jannah, ba'idun an al-nar. وَإِنَّ الْبَخِيلَ بَعِيدًا عَنِ اللَّهِ بَعِيدًا عَنِ النَّاسِ بَعِيدًا عَنِ الْجَنَّةِ قَرِيبًا مِنَ النَّارِ It reflects. You see, when you transform your understanding of how you get sustenance in your life and how you manage wealth and how you manage prosperity, if you do it right, it becomes a pathway for happiness in this life and happiness in the hereafter, my dear brothers and sisters. And that's what we ought to be doing because this is a matter that's very close to us. We deal with it every day. We deal with it when we write checks. We deal with it when we have to allocate and pay bills. We deal with it every day. Why can't we transform it into a ibadah? A way that, that will make us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Closer to people. Closer to Jannah and away from the hellfire. And that's what the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so many other places. Another one that the scholars talk about is Al-Ihsan, إِذَا الضُّعَفَاءِ وَالْمُحْتَجِينَ And we spoke about, and the last is Istiqama, to be steadfast on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, rizq is not just about gaining a living and using it. Rizq is about complying with the words and the guidance of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala and living a life in accordance with His guidance every moment, every minute every hour until we meet our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is with full pleasure with us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and keep us steadfast. Allahumma afu anna wa aghfir lana wa arhamna. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru. Innahu ghafurur rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fihu. Wa salatu wa salamu ala al-habib al-mustafa wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa anwala. My dear respected brothers and sisters, this beautiful place that we call the Masjid Dar al Hijra, Alhamdulillah, has been the source of blessings upon all of us. And one of the things that we want to do is maintain it and sustain it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our generosity, through our help, through our support, through our constant understanding that it's the very vehicle that's needed for us to fundamentally protect our families and keep them preserved and give us the space where we can remind one another 
insha'Allah, of how we can live our Islam to the fullest, how we can go out to the world and change it, insha'Allah, towards the better, using the guidance of our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and the guidance of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Next week, insha'Allah, not tomorrow's Saturday, but the following Saturday, Dar al Hijra is holding its annual fundraising dinner, insha'Allah. Tickets are in the office. It's going to be in the Marriott in Falls Church, very close to us, the place where we've held it for so many years. If you just want to start that beautiful process of realigning your understanding of rizqan in your life, start there, insha'Allah. Come to the fundraiser. Spend the time to see what has this place done for us and how is it that we will make it a priority that we will spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the success of this place. For indeed, that is insha'Allah our path of felicity in this life and the hereafter. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and guide us. Allahumma a'fu anna wa aghfir lana wa arhamna. Anta mawlana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaaha. Wa zakkiha mawlaya anta khayru man zakkaaha. Anta waliyuha wa mawlaaha. Ibad Allah. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر